Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of me reading a book in every subgenre of every genre. This is the series where I, Elliot, discover new books by using genres as the way to direct myself towards them. And the genre we'll be exploring this time is Builders Roman. Google tried to make me say Buildings Roman, but that just sounds wrong. I'm pretty sure this is a German word. Not that I understand German, but Buildings Roman I mean, doesn't sound right. Builders Roman is how I'll say it, but I'm really going to try to avoid saying this word. Anyways, what is Builders Roman? Well, it's commonly known as a coming of age story where it follows the protagonist as they develop morally and psychologically. And in German, Builders Roman actually means novel of education or novel of formation. There you go. Now you know as much as I do about the word build as Roman, probably more. And the book representing that is The Kite Runner by Khalid Hosani. As a longtime lover of kites, I can't believe it took me so long to actually read this book. I know this book is part of certain like public school curriculums and uh, the movie came out like over 10 years ago, written by David Benioff, I believe. But this is actually my first experience with it so it's all very new to me. I love the relationship between the father and the son. That is a relationship that I could certainly relate to. Baba is not good with children, at least not his own. We learn this right away because he chooses to spend most of his time in grown-up time where he doesn't have to entertain, educate, or tiptoe around his kid. I'm not like my father at all so I totally get this because having a kid is not like a book you get to fill in as the story tells us. I love how real it is, the violent thoughts between the father father and the son and how at times they want to kill each other because that is what expectation can do to two people who are so closely bound together. This book is full of lessons and it reminds me a lot of The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho and it's just like how moral lessons are delivered through fiction and it just feels life-changing. I can't believe it took me so long to read this. I think I would have been a better person if I began reading this like in my teenage years. A few of the lessons that really stuck out to me was that there is only one sin and that is theft. Whatever the crime is, whether it's murder or a lie, it's all a variation of theft. Another one that I really like is a boy who doesn't stand up for himself becomes a man who doesn't stand up for anything. I've heard that line many times before, but actually reading it in the book, it was like, oh, this, this is for real. I also love how self-aware this book is because at one point the characters talk about how a sad story makes a good book. And I'm like, yes, this, this is a really good good sad book at least up to where i am now which is about the middle up to this point i think this book asks us a very important question and that is what is the hill we're willing to die on what are our principles where do we draw that line is it death or is it honor you might know the right answer but life throws you these pivotal tests of characters and it doesn't matter what you say it's what you actually do in those moments that matter and when the time comes you might have to let your friend take the hit for your own success and you're gonna have to live with that guilt just like a mirror moments like this can feel like a war and it's absolutely life shattering because war can change things pretty quickly just like a pandemic, but in a way so much worse. We in North America don't really know what a war is like because it's never really happened in our backyard. Most of us haven't lived through something like that. I like how Baba and Amir's world change when they get to California, where once we felt shame for Amir, we now feel that shame for Baba and his stubbornness. And oddly enough, his father being outside of his element gave Amir confidence, confidence he otherwise might not have had if he stayed in Afghanistan. This is such a powerful book about immigration and what I think the American dream actually is. It's about leaving a place that was really bad. It's about having a second chance. I'm really enjoying this book so far. Like I mentioned, I'm about halfway through. I'm gonna finish it and then I'm gonna come back and give you my final thoughts right now. All right, we are back and I just finished reading The Kite Runner by Khalid Hassani and this is such a good book. This is a great book. It's so powerful like the part where it reveals what happened to Hassan and just the, the letters and the dialogue and the inner monologue. It's so good at controlling the pace of the story and then giving hope to the reader and then just pulling it all away. It's such good writing and storytelling. Uh, and also the foreshadow with the slingshot, man. And 
it's just all the characters in the story actually plays a role in the plot and just doesn't just serve as giving information and it's just done so well this is i can see why this is like textbook storytelling not only is this book so well written it also touches on some important themes like religion and how religion can both give us hope and also force us to do some unspeakable things it turns us against each other in many ways like for example the double standard that religion tends to have with women and how it's a great shame for a woman not to be married and one line that i really liked in it i think goes something like this is like every woman needs a husband even though uh he may silence her song and it's talking about Amir's in-law and, and how they're in such like a loveless marriage. Another area that religion kind of dictates is the idea of adoption and how kind of taboo it is to raise a child that's not of your own blood because you don't know what bloodline that child comes from. And it just feels like such a selfish thing to like want a child of your own blood, even though adoption is such a viable option. So this book came out in 2003, which is not that long in the grand scheme of things, but it is almost 20 years ago. And reading it after all this time, I thought things would be, feel kind of dated. But then looking at the news, you realize things in Afghanistan hasn't gone much better since this book was published. And that makes this feel as relevant, if not more relevant than ever, to actually read this book and realize what war can do. So the second half of this book has a lot more action in it, and it comes from Amir returning back to Afghanistan, this war zone, and feeling as though he is a tourist in his own country, and he has this conversation with his driver there and it goes something like how someone from the upper class is always kind of a tourist in their country they never really experience the nitty grittiness of actually living off of the land in a way like actually living in the dirt of the country another part that i remembered well and that i really liked was when amir is returning back to Kabul and how going back is like seeing an old friend but this old friend is now homeless and destitute and it's like a war zone everything's destroyed but you still see people having hope that one day things will go back to normal and it's it is kind of the world we're living in right now we're going through an extreme crisis not to the level of Kabul but People are just waiting for the new normal to return, waiting to not just dance in the street as they would in old time Kabul, but for us, it's returning to like going to restaurants and doing all those things. And you realize how quickly things do in fact change and how long it could take to recover. And that's the scary part of it. While this book is great for empathizing with Amir and his whole coming of age story, I think another thing that it does is help you see through the perspective of those people who are doing these evil, evil things like the Taliban. And you realize how these bad people could use their reasoning to justify what they're doing. And I think we're seeing that a lot in modern society too. I think we're seeing a lot of people finding excuses, finding reasons to continue staying bad. And there's this line in this book that I really liked and it goes, sometimes bad people stay bad and you need to stand up to them. Perhaps the most important moment of the book, at least in my opinion, is the moment when Amir stands up to his father-in-law telling him to never call Sharab the Hazara boy in his presence ever again. Of all the battles Amir had to go through, I think that's the one that completed his transformation. And that's what makes um, The Kite Runner such a good representation of what a builder's Roman style novel is. It's this full transformation that happens from boy to man. It's about being someone who learns their values and then sticks to it.
finding that hill to die on. And finally, I want to mention this, and one of my favorite parts about this book is the juxtaposition between America and Afghanistan. And one thing that really stood out to me is how the consumption of stories is different and how in America you would never spoil, you never spoil an ending. But in Afghanistan, the ending is all that matters. Does the character end up happy? So go ahead and spoil the ending for an Afghan. But does this story have a happy ending? It's not completely clear, but I do love the way it ends in such this bittersweet way. And it's about the kite, it just ties it all back. The kite and how it's such a simple, a simple joy of life and how these simple joys are actually the things worth living for. And yeah, that's, I love this book. It's such a good book. I'm so glad I finally, finally decided to read it. So this is the Kite Runner uh, representing the genre of Builders Roman. Um, this is a great book. I love this book. It's probably one of my all time favorite books. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Uh, once again, I'm Elliot. And I'm reading a book in every subgenre of every genre. If you want to come along on this journey, please do subscribe or check out this playlist here. And uh, I will see you in the next video, next book coming real soon. All right, bye.